Today we are going to attempt to rescue the Star Trek Deep Space Nine model that I've printed here that looks like it's been at the business end of a photon torpedo. This is a story of a failed 3D printing project. Yes, they do happen. I'll show you what went wrong and we'll do a post-mortem. Plus, I have a new tool. Okay, welcome back to Advanced Geekery. My name is David Gewertz, and today we're going to attempt to derive some value from this Star Trek Deep Space Nine model, which um, isn't looking too good at this point. So, the thing about Deep Space Nine is that it is a shape that is absolutely not intended to be 3D printed. It's supported on three lower pylons with a center ring, and the whole middle of the thing is hanging over midair. As you can kind of see here, this is the middle, and this is all hanging over thin air because it's supposed to be in space. So to print this thing, especially out of filament that is liquid when it lands, we have to try to build supports around it. Now the interesting question is whether or not the building of supports kind of ruins the model. As you can already see, there are parts of the model that are, are in really rough shape. So I don't know whether I can salvage that or not. We'll find out. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind the scenes updates on my projects, and must watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own project spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part, subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait, click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. Let's start with the one piece of good news. I got myself this very cool tool, which is an ultrasonic cutter. It is basically an X-Acto knife that vibrates at high speed and cuts through the plastic fairly easily. You do need to be really careful both where your hand is and how you do it because you have to slice gently and at the end, as you see, it can jump. But it cuts through and it doesn't really melt the plastic very much, which, you know, a hot soldering iron might do instead. And it made removing these supports much easier and much less damaging than they've been in the past. So I pulled that first piece off and then I started working my way around the outer ring, just carefully removing all of the supports around the outside of the model. Here's where I started to see the rough support residue and worried whether or not the model was going to be salvageable at all. So I started to work my way around and I pretty much pulled off all of the supports around the outer ring. What was really nice was I was able to use the ultrasonic tool to separate the brim from the pylons and the supports. It came in really handy being able to give a really nice clean cut to that area. It became apparent that the supports really left a mess down there. At this point, I thought that the one redeeming value would be that you really couldn't see the underside of the station on a shelf or something, so it might be all right. But not so much. The next step is removing the center supports and the center of this thing is extremely delicate. So I worked my way around and pulled out the outside supports fairly carefully, but the challenge was making sure that the inside piece didn't break. Fortunately, I was able to get all those pieces off and the inside piece turned out pretty okay by the time I reached that point. This was another spot where the ultrasonic cutter came in really handy to help me gently get through and isolate the center part of the station, which if I remember correctly, is the ore processing area of Deep Space Nine. Ironically, the one part of this project that turned out really nice was the single most delicate part of the entire project the part that I really didn't expect would turn out, and it came out really well. Although, as you can see, the rest of the bottom of the station is bad. The top actually looks pretty good until you get to the pylons. The, the printing of the ring itself looks nice and probably could have been sort of acceptable on a shelf if you didn't look at 
the mess that is the pylons. But of course, the pylons are a mess. And I tried to clean these things off with the ultrasonic cutter. I tried to slice it down. And it just became more and more apparent that this wasn't going to work out. And then all of a sudden, it broke. I tried for a few more minutes, but realized that this just wasn't going to work out. And that's when I came to the conclusion that this project was pretty much failed. Well, sometimes things don't work out. This one hasn't worked out. I mean, it's sort of recognizable as Deep Space Nine, but the pylon is all crufty. It's not exactly easy to repair. I mean, it's possible, but I don't. I certainly don't have the model making skills. Um, the multicolor printing was kind of cool. It took 36 hours or so to get here, but underneath, it looks like crap. Although this area came out pretty well in here, um, but overall, it it kind of looks like crap. Um, so. I'm going to possibly come back at some point with a different DS9 model, maybe one that has to be assembled because this, this didn't work out. But, you know, I mean, one of the things that you learn in all sorts of projects is that not everything works out, you know? Um, you do what you can. You get as far as you can. Sometimes you've got to say... I can't save it. Sometimes you say, oh, I have some ways to go and make it better. Um, it's just the way the way projects are. I think it's just the attempt to big, make something as a 3D print that's hanging in space like this requires maybe dissolvable filament, maybe some kind of release agent, maybe a different design. I mean, I have no doubt that I'll probably come back at some point and try to do another Deep Space Nine attempt with a different model or with a different technique. But this is where we got right now. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can't make it awesome. Okay, so this is Next Day Me, and I've been thinking about the results of this project all night. And I was trying to decide whether or not to even show it to you or to move on, but I think it's important that you kind of benefit from my experience, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise. Okay, so the first thing to say is that I spent hours, hours and hours going in and hand coloring in tiny little portholes on this thing in the 3D model uh, in white filament. And I can see exactly two tiny little dots in the whole thing. I must have spent two hours and hundreds of little portholes hand hand, um, well, not hand, but in the slicer, uh, painting in those little dots. And they're, they're not here. They're not here at all. So I could have used that extra roll of filament for uh, special support material, and I didn't. So that's one interesting thing to, uh, to know about this. All right, so this sonic cutting tool worked out really fairly well. It wasn't quite as good as I would have liked, but it was better than not having it at all. It was a little bit more expensive than I would have liked, and I would have liked it to be battery powered, although I don't know whether that would have changed its performance. So I don't know whether I'm going to keep the magic cutter or whether I'll decide to return it and possibly get a different sonic cutter. But I like the sonic cutter as an additional tool. This would have been much, much harder to, to break apart using just snippers and pliers. So this is definitely... Uh, a useful tool if you're dealing with supports. Um, the button right here is annoying because I, I turned it off mid-cut so many times. But um, overall, the technology and the usefulness is there. Mm, it is expensive. So I used Anycubic uh, Slicer Next on my Mac Studio M4. Now, when I last used the... Uh, any cubic slicer and did fancy coloring and um, special custom supports. I made this guy and my M1 Mac Studio just died. I mean, it was. I mean, I could barely move an object. Um, 
this model, <laughs> it's got supports hanging off of it. This model is substantially more complex. I mean, substantially more and uh, has lots more little painting dots in it, like hundreds of painting dots. And I could rotate it perfectly smoothly. I mean, the, the tool in the slicer with the M4 Mac Studio was the best part of the whole process of, of this thing. You know, the ugly mess notwithstanding. I think I mentioned earlier on that I thought all night about whether or not I was going to even put this video out in any form because it's 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 a failed print. I mean it it was not what I wanted to present to you. I mean from this distance it sort of looks like DS9 until you start seeing the shaggies. Um but I'd also don't want you to get the impression that that those of us who do these videos whether we're called experts or not whether it always comes out right or always comes out perfect. I mean, if all you see is somebody who supposedly knows this stuff or does this stuff for a living and all they do is they come out perfectly, you won't, you will not feel good about yourself. And when, when yours turns out as crappy as this one does. Um, so I think it's important to share not only the wins like the Yoda, which was astonishing, the baby Yoda, uh, but also the, the disappointments because you know, just because we do this stuff for a living and we have the ability to edit our videos doesn't necessarily mean that stuff goes smoothly for us and it should go smoothly for you. This is, this is, it never turns out quite right. There's always something involved. That's why it's called editing. So that's why I decided to run with this video. So as I've shown you before, the support interface where the supports connect to the model look terrible and something went really wrong whoops there's a piece coming out here something went really wrong up here in these areas and i'm not quite sure what it is um whether that means i should have used a dissolvable support i don't really like dissolvable support because i don't really want to run elmer's glue through my sewers when i dump it out um or whether i should have used a different material um, like pet G up against the PLA, which pulls out fairly easily. I don't know. I'm also really unsure what went wrong up in this area, um, on all of these pylons, because clearly, you know, as you can see from here, there's support here, but something went horribly wrong. So I'm going to, at some point I might revisit it. I might decide I don't care. And that's perfectly reasonable. It's, it's, it's okay to go, well, yep, that didn't work. I don't care. I'm moving on. But um, I'm a little stubborn. And I may decide at some point in the future to revisit this and try a different technique. That's good, too. But please comment in the comments if you have any ideas about either what I did wrong, because, of course, commenters always tell me what I did wrong, or what you think might be a better strategy for another run at this. Okay, so the purge tower. Um, I did not include a purge tower on here because I got a little greedy. To scale this up to the full size of the plate, the purge tower would have either like intercepted the edge here or somehow had to fit in here. And with the supports, it wasn't really able to, and it looked like there might be a toppling potential or whatever. Uh, the purge tower is supposed to help get rid of stringing, um, among other things. And I did not include one, but I don't think it would have helped at all for the ugly supports. Um, but I did get a little greedy and I did leave out the purge tower and all my other prints that came out really nicely had a purge tower. So whether that contributed to the problem or not, I don't know. And, you know, as I look at it this way on the top, not counting these messes, the top of, of the station looks pretty good. Um, so it really is the challenge of the supports and what went wrong up here. That is the, at the crux of, um, the problem, it's not necessarily excess stringing because there really isn't that much excess stringing. I mean, there's a little bit, you can see right here, right here, but it really isn't too bad. Um, but I did leave out the purge tower and that's something that you should know. So I want to make a special shout out to Sunlu because they provided the gray, gold and red filament for this project. And um, it's always really helpful to have a project partner provide the filament, especially for a project like this, which uses up a lot of filament. 
Um, and they also provided the filament for the Baby Yoda as well. So big thanks to Sun Lu for the filament providing services they provided. And lastly, I wanted to say that I do not think that this is the failure of the Anycubic S1. I think the Anycubic S1 performed fine. I think it was a very, very challenging model with all sorts of issues and support stuff. So I think the, I think the Anycubic S1 did a fine job given what it was given, but you know, it, it takes what comes into it and puts what goes out of it, garbage in and garbage out. And unfortunately, um, I didn't give it enough to showcase itself at its best with this project, but that is not the fault of the S1. So thanks to Anycubic for providing the S1 and I'll show you more projects, hopefully more successful than this uh, in future videos. All right, so that's it for my thoughts the next day. Uh, let's continue with our regularly scheduled programming. So for Advanced Geekery, my name is David Gewertz. Go out there and make it awesome and also know when it's time to fold them. Know when to hold them and know when to fold them and know when to walk away from a project and start something new. So uh, thanks for your patience, folks. This one didn't, didn't pan out. <laughs>